In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the anatomy of the calf region. And we're also going to discover your second set of triceps. And I don't mean like one, two sets of triceps. I mean, you have one set in your arms and you have one down in your legs. One of my favorite things to do when I start teaching students about muscles is just to ask them kind of casually, like, hey, do you, which muscles do you know? Like just off the top of your head. This is your first anatomy class that goes over muscles. What do you know? And you see common themes. Like people just tend to get exposed to the same types of muscles and muscle groups over the course of their lifetime. Um, and so we all just are familiar with the select few. So like the big hitters, you know, like biceps or rectus abdominis or your quadriceps or your hamstrings. But another one that a lot of people will mention are the calves. And that's exactly what you're looking at here. These are the calf muscles. But now we're actually going to see that the calf muscles are really two muscles that are, con are coming together and sharing this common tendon down here, which we call the Achilles or more properly, the calcaneal tendon. Achilles just is funner to say, right? We've all been exposed to Greek mythology and the story of Achilles for so long. It just it feels right. <laughs> it feels right. But the, I, by the way, I just want to mention just how big and massive the Achilles actually is. When I was growing up, I always just assumed it was the small portion I could pinch as I like go down. <laughs> it's not. Like that obviously is part of the Achilles or calcaneal tendon, but it's a whole lot more. Look at this thing. This thing is massive. It goes up about half the distance of your lower leg. Um, and so this is a really big tendon. In fact, it's the strongest tendon in the human body. And also, you know, while we're here, we can even discuss, I mean, this is also getting injured at an you know, I don't want to say alarming. I haven't looked into the statistics. I can't tell you if it's increasing or decreasing, but it happens with enough frequency that people are aware of how bad this injury is. I mean, as I'm filming this, um, an American athlete by the name of Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics just ruptured his. He ruptured his, which is terrible. I mean, I'm not a Boston Celtics fan, but I am not about to root for people to get injured. And it was really sad to see. You could tell he was really emotional about it. But the thing is, he ruptured it because, at least my assumption here is, due to an anatomical liability that you and I have too. Like He's obviously an incredibly fit and athletic individual. You know, he's a professional athlete. He has the best care possible. And yet, this happens. And it wasn't like he was doing anything extreme. You know, he wasn't doing cartwheels you know, or something really, really crazy like that. I mean, he was just kind of playing defense, I believe. It might have been playing offense. It doesn't really matter. My point is, um, it's possible for you to rupture too. And that is because what you can't see in this image is there are two blood vessels, right? You have the posterior tibial artery and the peroneal artery, which are basically just coming down that backside of your lower leg. And what will happen is they will converge with each other and they create what's called a watershed. A watershed in anatomy is where basically just two blood vessels are meeting together. But what's interesting is that that also means that deep down, there's not a lot of tributaries that can come off and supply the tendon in that area, giving it a lot of robust vascularization. Right? It's not that tendons don't have any blood supply. They do. These are, these are vascular tissues. It's just that certain parts of the tendon may not. And this region, which is about two inches or around four to six centimeters um, up from the calcaneus, your heel bone, there is just a region that has lo a lot less blood vessels. And we call that the watershed region. And that is also where people are most likely to rupture because you have to understand these muscles and this tendon take a lot of kinetic abuse, right? Like every step you take, whether you're walking or running on an elliptical, on a bike, you know, like whatever you're doing, you are putting a large amount of force on this tendon. Or this tendon can handle somewhere around nine times your body weight. But if you overload that in one giant movement of just landing, you can easily snap it. But most people aren't doing that. It's not like most people are jumping out of a second story window or anything. What's happening is chronic stress to the muscle, chronic stress just due to activity. And the fact that this is not well vascularized means that over time, little tiny tears can happen in the collagen proteins of the Achilles and that can add up. And if you can't properly heal it because you don't have a great robust blood supply, all it might take is, you know, like a quick movement on the basketball court or, you know, like on the soccer field, it doesn't really matter. And that could be enough to rupture it. And that's exactly what you see. 
Um, again, I don't want to say like this is extraordinarily common, but you are starting to see this more <laughs> frequently with, you know, 40 year olds, you know, dads are just like at home playing with their kids and <laughs> ripping their Achilles. It's just a really interesting piece of tissue. But I mean, this thing is very strong. This is the strongest tendon in the body. And that's because the calf muscles and gastrocnemius, which is this one here. So gastroc is the most characteristic of them all. It's this, you can see this medial head here, and then you can see part of this lateral head. And in fact, I have this different view that I also wanna show you, which is really cool. It's showing you just like what their shape is underneath the skin. And so you can see like these coming up here, this is part of gastrocnemius. And then there's also like this little sliver here that we're gonna see is soleus in just a moment but both of them are gonna come down and insert down here. So again, this is what I always thought the Achilles tendon was, but in reality, it comes all the way up here. So again, gastrocnemius is this really characteristic one. When people think about, you know, like getting good calves, they're, they're, they're talking about, <laughs> they're talking about gastrocnemius for the most part. Um, however, you also have soleus, look at soleus here. So this is another really cool view where you can see a lot of nerves, you can see blood vessels, um, and you can also see, um, ama, you can see this tendon right here. I love this. I didn't even notice this when I was looking ahead of time. This is a tendon called um, from the plantaris muscle. So if you look really closely here, there's a muscle belly just underneath this nerve that is called the plantaris. And this tendon of plantaris is sometimes nicknamed the freshman's nerve because what you would see is, you know, first year med students be doing dissection. They get all excited because they find this and they think they found a nerve. And so what would happen is they would, you know, they call over the lab aide and they'd come over and like, oh, I found, found a nerve. And you know, they'd look at them and say, sorry, that's actually a tendon. So it got this nickname as being the freshman's nerve. I don't even know how accurate that is, but that's, <laughs> that's what I've been told over the years. But what the, in the green here is the soleus muscle and soleus gets its named after being fish in shape, like, like a fish fillet. Um, and you can see that, you know, you can see that through this look here, but, um, soleus, and we're going to see, we can compare and contrast this to gastrocnemius from a slightly different view in a moment, but soleus, if you look at it, it doesn't cross the knee. So you can see in the posterior knee here, you see these things, these are the condyles of the femur. So you're going to have the medial and lateral condyle. Um, and condyle just means knuckles. We're going to see that gastrocnemius will come all the way up to the posterior knee, but soleus doesn't. Right. Soleus is going to be just like this coming down and it's going to be inserting at the calcaneus. But this is going to be, and this is the kind of relationship I want you to understand because I'm going to switch to a different view in a second, is that soleus is anterior to gastrocnemius. Or another way to say that is that it's deep to gastrocnemius. So basically you'd have to remove the good looking gastroc in order to see soleus. So if we go back to this view here, again, here's gastroc. So let me actually get rid of that right there. So here's gastroc. And then if you look, this little tiny sliver right there is all you can see superficially of soleus. So again, most of the view of what you're seeing of uh, the calves is going to be gastroc nemius. All right. So again, look at how those, I just, I don't know, it's a really good looking muscle, but you can see that both of these are going to be coming in there. And this right here is going to be the gastrocnemius. And so now again, we can see this highlighted green view. You can see the same nerves. You can even see soleus peeking through right here. Um, you might even be able to see a little bit of the plantaris tendon. I think that might be what we're trying to see there, but you can see that gastrocnemius is coming up and is covering those condyles now. So again, we know that it's going to have an action on the posterior knee. Right. In fact, that's like, that's something I want you to always be thinking about. If you're actively trying to learn about muscles, you basically just want to look at it and ask yourself, okay, like what joint is it covering? Like what joint is it crossing? That means it's going to have an action at that joint. So we can see that gastrocnemius is, is crossing the back of the knee. And then it's also crossing here at the ankle joint, which means this has at least two actions. And so what you see from gastrocnemius is that it's also going to do flexion of the knee flexion of the knee is going to be like, like right now I'm sitting in a chair, my knees are in the flexed position, right? My knees are not just locked out in front of me. That's a flexed knee. So you can think like a squat, right? If someone's going into a squat, they're going to be flexing their knee and other muscles like the hamstrings are all going to be involved. Obviously the quadriceps are going to be there to help guide the motion, but flexion of the knee is one action of gastrocnemius. But again, it's blending into that Achilles as uh, is soleus. And those are going to come down and insert in that calcaneus, which means they are going to also perform plantar flexion.
which is like you're standing on the tips of your toes. That's what plantar flexion would be. So both of the, uh, which makes sense by the way. Sorry if I'm, uh, you know, uh, getting ahead of myself here, but like it, it makes sense because, you know, you think like calf raises or any other kind of calf workout, you know, you're gonna be standing on the tips of your toes. And that is going to help develop these muscles very robustly. But in fact, if we come over here, what's really cool is we also have these cross-sectional views so here you can see the lateral head of it, of gastrocnemia. So we have the tibia, we have the fibula, the tibia, the fibula, and then you can see this is the lateral head of gastrocnemius. By the way, these are cadaveric. These are really, really cool. Um, and then we can even see it from this view. Here's the more medial head. So you can see the medial head is going to be a bit uh, larger than we'd see on that other one uh, from the lateral view. But this is just a really awesome view. And you can see also just how much muscle tissue is inside of your lower leg or more properly called the crust. But this probably should make sense to you now though why we call this the triceps surrey because if you look closely at gastroc, there's this split right down the middle. Can you see that? All right, this split right here, it's kind of getting, it's coming over. This split is showing you that medial and lateral head, which again, since both of those heads are converging into the Achilles, or that calcaneal tendon, as is the soleus, if you count it up, one, two, three heads all blending into one tendon, that is gonna be the triceps surrey. Surrey just means calf, and that's exactly what you see here. Um, this is These are going to be your calf region. Um, and by the way, sometimes people will include that little freshman's nerve, plantaris, as being part of the triceps surrey. I've never really taught it that way. It wasn't how I was taught myself. Um, plantaris is more just kind of like sandwiched between gastrocnemius and soleus. So if we cut off, you know, this proximal attachment here of gastroc and then grabbed it and yanked it down, we would see plantaris' tendon, but it's not literally joining up with the Achilles. Instead, it's just inserting in a very similar spot on the calcaneus itself. But, you know, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, if you want to include it as the triceps surrey, you are more than welcome to. But... My hope is that you have a really good understanding of how this works. Now, by the way, everything I just did here is 100% free on KenHub, right? We have, like, this is all a article on the gastrocnemius. I could click on and see soleus. So, I mean, I can even click like the triceps surrey so you can see this specifically. These are 100% free articles that we provide for you on the KenHub platform. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this, uh, links in the description below please go ahead and click on them. You can kind of explore all of this. You can see how fun it is to click these images, read it, because you can see that we've put a lot of effort into explaining the anatomy of all of this. And you can even see, hey, you know what? Let's look at this. I, I like this view. Look at this. It's showing exactly. I wish I had thought about this <laughs> ahead of time. Well, look, you can see gastrocnemius. You can see the Achilles. You can see it's been cut here. And then we've zoomed in. Look at this little zoom in. So again, you can see gastroc. Um, let me get this grown right there. Gastroc, um, you can see gastroc cut away. You can see plantaris. You can see soleus. You can see that relationship they all have together, all belonging again to the triceps surrey. This is all 100% free. Um, we even embed videos in the articles. You can kind of scan down. Um, you can see we have quizzes in here, which are awesome. That's a good way for you to test yourself and just see how well you're retaining everything. But hopefully you now understand that you have two sets of triceps. Again, it's not that you have two in your arms. I mean, we all get that. We're saying you have the triceps brachii and you also have, scan back up here, the triceps surrey, which again, surrey just means calf. So again, hope that made a lot of sense. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please jump down in the comments and um, let us know what other types of videos you'd like us to cover in the future. You know, we're always looking to improve. We're always looking to, you know, give the people what they want, what they find useful and helpful. So be sure to just like leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see in the future. Also, while you're down there, please give this video a like. Um, it's a small thing. I know every single YouTuber is asking for it, but at the same time, those things actually make a difference and it helps this video perform better in the all powerful YouTube algorithm. But again, thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video.